you ought to know that there are differences in intelligence. It's really important. If you go into a job and you're not smart enough for that job, you're going to have one bloody miserable time. And you're going to make life wretched for the people around you because you won't be able to handle the position. And as you climb hierarchies of competence, the demand on fluid intelligence increases. And so, unless you want to fail, you don't put yourself in over your head. Well, what's over your head? Well, that's a tricky thing to figure out. I mean, you have to figure that out with intelligence, you have to figure it out with conscientiousness, you have to figure it out with creativity, you have to figure it out with stress tolerance, with agreeableness, because you want to go into a cooperative environment and not a competitive one if you're agreeable, and with neuroticism, you want, probably want to keep the stress level of your job relatively low, because those are all places that you can break down, and most people have at least one significant weakness in their intelligence personality makeup and you've got to be careful not to place yourself in a position where that's going to be a fatal flaw but what you really want to do as far as I can tell if you want to maximize your chances for both success and, and let's say well-being is you want to find a strata of occupation in which you would have an intelligence that would put you in the upper quartile that's perfect then you're a big fish in a small pond and you don't, want to be the, you don't want to be the stupidest guy in the room. It's a bloody rough place to be. So, and you probably don't want to be the smartest guy in the room either, because what that probably means is you should be in a different room. Right? You should look at a place where, if you're right at the top, it's, you've mastered it. It's time to go somewhere where you're a little lower, so that you've got something to climb up for. So, and I can, if you're not hyper-conscientious, for example, you're probably not going to want a job that you have to work 70 hours a week at, because you're just not wired up that way. You'd rather have some leisure, and like, more power to you. If that's how you're wired up, there's nothing wrong with having some leisure. But if you're someone who can't stand sitting around doing nothing, ever, then maybe you can go into a job that's going to require you to work 75 hours a week. And almost all jobs that are at the top of complex dominance hierarchies require very high intelligence and insane levels of conscientiousness, as well, generally speaking, as pretty damn high levels of stress tolerance. As you move down the hierarchy, the jobs get simpler, they're more likely to be assigned by other people, or they're repetitive. Because what IQ predicts to some degree is how rapidly you can learn something, but once you've learned it, it doesn't predict how necessarily how well you do at it. People with lower IQs are more suited to more repetitive jobs. Under 87, is there something? Well, no. Right. That's a big problem. And it's something our society has not addressed at all. Jobs for people with IQs of less than 85 are very, very rare. So what the hell are those supposed, people supposed to do? It's like one, it's 15% of the population. What are they supposed to do? Well, we better figure it out. Because one of the things that's happening too is that as the, as the high IQ tech geeks get a hold of the world, the demand for cognitive power is increasing, not decreasing, right? You want to be a teller? Well, you know, those checkout machines, they're not so simple. You want to work at McDonald's? You think that's a simple job? You don't see robots working at McDonald's. And the reason for that is that what McDonald's workers do is too complex for, for robots to do. The conservatives will say, well, they should just work harder. It's like, sorry, that ain't going to fly. And the liberals will say, well, there's no difference between people anyhow. And you can just train people to do everything. And that's wrong. So they're both wrong. And they're seriously wrong. And the fact that neither side of the political perspective will take a good, cold, hard look at this problem means that we're going to increasingly have a structural problem in our societies. Because we're complexifying everything so rapidly that you can't find employment unless Increasingly, unless you're intelligent, you guys are really going to face this, you know. Lawyers are disappearing like mad. And the reason for that is, you can look it up online. Increasingly, you can do things yourself if you're smart. And so, like, the working class people have been wiped out pretty nicely over the last 30 years by, by automation and various other things. It's the low end of the white collar class that's coming up next. So I'm not saying that lower lawyers are in the low end, but low end lawyers are in the low end of the white collar class. So there's still going to be plenty of positions for people who are creative and fast on their feet and super smart. In fact, those people are going to have all the money, and that's already happening to a great degree.